So currently right now, I'm making this video and interest rates are right about 7%. What's fascinating is most people realize that Fort Wayne is affordable, but what they don't realize is the builders of the new construction are offering incentives to help buyers purchase these homes by offering a lower interest rate. And right now that's really important because interest rates are sitting about 7%. They were supposed to come down by now, but they have not. Many of the builders are offering incentive to buyers to push production up because they got to get that home sold so they can build the next house. So they're offering incentive packages where you can get a 5% interest rate in this market. The reason I think this is so fascinating is if you're moving to Fort Wayne, you got two decisions that you need to make. Do you want to rent first or do you want to buy a house? Now it's about 50, 50 when it's time to make that decision. And I know myself, luckily my wife was still in Texas and I was able to basically couch surf for about two months before I could find the house that I really wanted. Now I think that it's a lot easier to make that transition because of the new construction homes that they started to build. DR Horton is the only national builder here, but I can tell you Olaf Holmes just sent me a text the other day telling me about some of the incentives that they have. Uh, Heller Holmes sent us a text asking us, hey, if you got buyers, we, we've got incentives to help them out. They will give you concessions to buy down your rate. And so that's one of the things that I just find fascinating. I remember the first time I decided to drive to the north side of Fort Wayne. There's a home on the market and I wanted to check it out. After work one day, I decided to drive northbound on Lima. And I remember I must have passed DuPont Road and off the left-hand side was this big open field and kids were playing out there. I distinctively remember they were playing rugby, which I never saw before. And there was this water fountain and it was a sunny day and I really felt comfortable. I felt like the communities just really stood out to me. I could tell that there was a little bit more space and it appeared that the homes had like bigger lots and it really looked like something out of a magazine. And right after that, my realtor showed me that house that was on was in Huntertown. It's a place called Huntertown. And I really wanna focus on Huntertown because that's where I live and I think a lot of people if they're moving from someplace else, they're gonna see Huntertown or they're gonna see the area right around Huntertown and be, and be really confused. But Huntertown's a really small area. Uh, in 2000, there was only 1,700 people that lived here. By 2010, that population rapidly increased to 4,700 people or about 4,800 people. And then again, it jumped 90% by 2020 to uh, just under 10,000 people. So Huntertown has continued to grow and that's because this is such a lucrative area. When I moved here, there was not as many new construction homes. So I bought a resale house. But now there is a subdivision almost everywhere you look. You've got Sonora, Marcella, Sonoma. Olaf Homes has a subdivision. They've got Rolling Oaks. I think they finished Rapids of Copper Creek. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of places that they're building here. And Fort Wayne's home prices are still more affordable than the national average. The median home price in Northwest Island County is $352,000. And that's based on the over 850 homes sold in Northwest Island County back in 2023. We did a video recently about some of the cool areas that you can find homes in Fort Wayne, some of the neighborhoods. The most expensive neighborhood would be Aslan Passage. And then the most affordable neighborhood is Hunter's Ridge. And they're going up to maybe 225,000, but those are mostly single story ranch style houses around about 1800 square feet. If this is your first time on this channel, we talk about everything there is to know about Fort Wayne. And today I wanna to talk about just the north side of Fort Wayne. If you wanna get a more comprehensive overview of Fort Wayne, go back and watch my ultimate relocation guide to living in Fort Wayne for 2024. For the people that live here, they probably don't travel up to the north side of town very often because just like in the city that you currently live in, there's really no reason to. But there has been rapid growth over the past 20 years. When we take a look at the Midwest region, there are many areas that are declining in population growth. There are other areas that are pretty much stagnant. Fort Wayne, Indiana is one of the few places that shows a steady rate of growth. As we take a look at the rapid growth in Fort Wayne, Indiana, we'll notice that a lot of it is going on on the north side of town. And that's many of you have come to this video because you want to find out more information about Fort Wayne, just like I did five years ago. While doing the research on Fort Wayne, Indiana, I had to decide, was I going to rent? Was I going to buy a house? And I think most people do that nowadays. They just want to see what houses look like. And as I started to look at houses, I noticed that I liked quite a few of those homes, but they were mostly in the southwest side and the northwest side. And I'm willing to bet a lot of you 
have noticed the same thing. You looked at Fort Wayne, Indiana, maybe you're getting a job here, you're relocating here. For some reason, maybe you work remote and you're looking for an affordable place to live. You've been looking online and you notice a lot of these homes are on the north side of Fort Wayne or they're in an area called Auburn or Huntertown or Leo or Cherubusco. So I wanna go high level. I wanna break this down on what you can expect on the north side of Fort Wayne. So that way you can be better prepared if you're thinking about moving to Fort Wayne. If this is your first time to this channel, my name is Noye Dials. I'm a local real estate agent with Keller Williams. Me and my wife, Francesca, we help people move to, from, and around Fort Wayne. We started this channel a few years ago because I noticed that there was a lack of information online about Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I think more people need to know about it. So we started making videos and helping people relocate here because there wasn't a lot of information on this small little city, as you probably have noticed. And more specifically, I ended up picking a home and I basically used my best judgment. Luckily for me, it, it all worked out. It was very, very good. And I ended up on the north side of town. We understand what it's like to move across country, to relocate to a place where you may not have a lot of family or friends, or you don't have a lot of information about that place. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. My contact information is below. You can't talk about the north side of Fort Wayne without talking about the school district and more importantly, the high school, which serves the entire area. Carroll High School, as an example of just how well they excel, as we know, academically, they come up on greaterschools.org or niche.com as either the number one or number two school district in the area. Their college readiness is unparalleled for the area. I know personally, my daughter's, uh, just, she just took the SAT last year, for example. Indiana just passed, I think in 2022, that all high school juniors take the SAT one time for free. So that's a little bit different than how I grew up. But not just academically, in sports, uh, Carroll Chargers have really brought a lot of attention to Northeast Indiana. They went to state the year before last, and that's after one of the star football players lost their life. It's actually a documentary. One of the graduates came back and did a documentary on that season, on that football season. And I use that football season not to bring up that because that was that's a painful thing for that family, but as an example of how good our sports are, but also how the community coalesced around that. We actually went down to uh, Indy when that football team went to state, which was my daughter's junior year, so the year before last. So it's not only the football team, but the community supports everybody here. And it, it just feels different. It's something that I've never felt before. And so the north side of town really sticks together. Buying a home isn't the only thing that's important to people. The second most important thing that I get during the dozens of Zoom calls that we have is people asking me what is there to do in Fort Wayne. And it took me a while to really find my lifestyle and my niche. One of the most popular activities in Fort Wayne, Indiana are outdoor activities. Things such as kayaking, canoeing, hiking, and bike riding. If you're on the north side of town, one of the coolest places that you can go is Acres Land Trust. The recreational activities on the north side of town are Salmon Farm Park, Allen County Fairgrounds, and the Puffer Belly Trail. And I can't forget Parkview YMCA. Now this place is really important because it's a good place for kids to meet other kids. So when we moved here, I think one of the first things we did that summer was enroll our daughter into one of those camp programs so she could meet other people that lived in this area that went to her school. So I thought that was super awesome. But they have a lot of uh, YMCAs, but the YMCA program is pretty big here. They've got several different ones throughout the city, the Renaissance downtown, Jorgensen YMCA, just to name a few. Puffer Belly Trail is not in Huntertown, but it's in this area. Huntertown's in 46748, right across from 46748. It's right down here, about a mile away. Puffer Belly Trail is nearly seven miles long. Eventually, they're going to build it out to be 13 miles, but it will take you all the way from north side of the city where we live, uh, very close to the city. Eventually they're gonna connect all the trails, but it's one of the most popular uh, trails on the north side of town. And it's going to connect you to some of the other trails on the trail system. The Fort Wayne trail system isn't the only place that you can take a hike. I talked about the Acres Land Trust. This private organization started in the 1960s. They wanted to protect and preserve forest wetlands and native grasslands. And they got some other unique areas like bogs and stuff like that, but they, they block those areas off to make sure that those areas are not tampered with and also to keep people safe, but it's free. And it's probably one of the most tranquil places. I would consider that a hidden gem. I think when we first moved here, we randomly st stumbled upon it. And that's one of the places that we like to 
we like to go to often. Taking a hike at the nature preserves or a jog around the Y isn't the only thing to do in the north side of Fort Wayne. They've got some pretty good dining options. Something that I would consider um, not necessarily fancy, but a little bit more formal, I would recommend Black Canyon. And then you also have Hideout 125. Now, Black Canyon is one of those places where, you know, I go all the time when I want to do something special for my wife or a special occasion or maybe something at work where I want to celebrate. It's a little, I wouldn't say dressed down like a dive bar, but I definitely would, you know, I'd iron my pants and wash my face before I went in there. Uh, some of the other areas in Fort Wayne, downtown Huntertown, they have a uh, coffee shop called Well Grounded. And I like to go there to support local, but it's actually pretty cool to go into this one plaza. It's off of Old Lima, which is where I believe the old downtown was back in the 1800s. They still have uh, the city hall building. It's like one building down there. That's where the Huntertown water utilities are paid down there. So we like to support local. I recommend Well Grounded is one of the places uh, that you can dine at. I've always talked about Ted's Beer Hall, which is a, it's a burger place and they have a lot of a beer on tap plus a barcade um, that's one of my favorite places to dine at on the north side of town some of the activities they also have a winery on the north side of town it is technically still in fort wayne if i'm not mistaken and that's uh country heritage it's a local winery here there's only two wineries in this area there's country heritage and two e's that's south of town they're both right on the edge of the outskirts of Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's something, that's one of the places that people like to go for live music and wine during the summertime. That area, Country Heritage is cool because they'll have live music and then they'll have food trucks or local food trucks will come out there so you can have some food as well. There's a pond out there and this is one of the pros about living in Fort Wayne or in the state of Indiana. You know, the bugs are not that bad. So even though they have the pond and the live music, you can eat out there and you don't really have to worry about gnats and flies just I mean, attacking you uh, incessantly. I think maybe by late summer, it gets a little bit tricky, but I, I've never put on bug spray the entire time I've lived in the state of Indiana. And now that you know what it's like being on the north side of Fort Wayne, check out my last video where I talked about the ultimate guide to relocating to Fort Wayne, and I'll see you there.